good morning first of all i welcome and i am really very thankful to the, all the students from different cities from different places uh, who are utilizing the youtube lectures on cerebrology and sequential geography to enhancing their knowledge and to clear their concept and i invite all of you and i request once again to all the students that if there is any problem or any question because we are having sufficient amount of time due to this lockdown period so they may ask any question or any query especially for all those youtube lectures which we have already discussed in detail today we are going to discuss the third part of the sedimentary structures we have discussed the sedimentary structures which are found on the top surface of the bed in the first lecture in the second lecture we have discussed the sedimentary structures which are found within the bed today we are going to discuss the sedimentary structures which are formed at the bottom of the bed and all those sedimentary structures which are formed at the bottom of the bed they are known as soil structures generally the soil structures they are formed by the erosional action of the in the soft sediments by the current or they are formed by some markings on the soft sediment by the pebbles by sticks uh, by shells uh, in the in the soft sediment so there are basically two type of sediment one is the soft sediment that is the mud layer and another is the sand layer that is the overlying unit so the depressions they are formed in the in the mud layer the depressions they are formed the markings they are formed and when the overlying sand unit that deposited that fills the gap and this filling is preserved on the bottom surface of the overlying sandy units and that's why because they are preserved at the bottom side that's why they are all are known as soil structures they are also known as erosional structures and sometimes some of the soil structures they are penny contemporaneous deformational structures also so in the soil structure the soil structures may be used or they are used as the geophytal structures means they are useful in the identification of top and bottom of the bed as well as they are very useful directional sedimentary structures they provide the paleocurrent pattern paleocurrent direction of the depositional environment and they also provides the information about the different physical chemical and biological characteristics of the depositional environment so there are different types of soil structure number 1 is tool marks then groove marks then current descent then fluke cup these are the important soil structures which are erosional and the uh, depositional in in nature the tool marks they are basically formed by the either skipping or rolling or bouncing or dragging of the objects such as stick or pebble or shells are in stone they are known as tool marks because they are formed by certain tools if they are like this the straight depressions are formed there in filling which is straight in nature they are known as groove marks they are known as groove marks if it is like this that that is similar to the hard soap if this is the pebble and this is the hard soap like structures then this is known as current 
present current present structures all these are very very important in providing the top and bottom as well as the direction for example in this this is the direction of the depositional environment in the current present structures then the float cost if this is the muddy layer soft sediment and if this is the pebble dropping here it will mark a depression at this place then it will come out from that depression and this is the direction of the movement of the fluid the overlying unit so this is the depression and this is the direction of the current the overlying sandy unit is deposited into this like this so the on the surface it will look like this that this is the mud or this is the sand and on the sand the structures will be deposited like this this is closed and tapering this is open and widening and this is the direction of the these are scoop shaped depressions these are similar to the flute and that's why they are known as flute mark or flute cast they are known as cast because these are cast like structures which are produced in the mold which was formed by the obstacle or by the by the pebbles so mold means the wooden boxes in which bricks are formed the wooden boxes are mold and the brick of sand silt and clay which comes out of that wooden box that is the cast so mold is the depression and cast is the sediments which are deposited into that particular depressions and these fluid casts are used as the top and bottom of the bed as well as in identification of the direction of the depositional environment so they are both the geopetal structure as well as the directional sedimentary structure then the, there are certain soft sedimentary deformation they are also known as peeny contemporaneous deformation such as number 1 is load cost then ball and pillow structure then flame structure then convolute bedding these are various soft sedimentary structures are they are the peeny contemporaneous deformation or soft deformation the low cost ball and pillow structure flame structures and the convolute bedding again in this situation also there is a soft sediment that is mud and above this we are getting sand if the sand because of the load because of the weight it comes like this into the underlying muddy units very mammalian like structure bulbous structures then that is known as load cast so load cast are bulbous structure irregular shaped structures and they are formed because the overlying sandy unit that intrudes into the muddy unit because of its load because of its weight so the preservation of this 
mammalian structure, bulbous structure, irregular shaped structure at the bottom of the sandy unit is known as load cost. If these loads are broken into the muddy units like this, they are broken like ball and pillow, then they are known as ball and pillow structure. In this again, the overlying sandy unit that intrudes into the muddy units, but that breaks in the form of ball and pillow, then they are known as ball and pillow structure. They are also produced because of the deformation, pinny contemporaneous deformation. Then the, in the case of flame structure, this is sand and this is mud. The muddy unit that intrudes into the sandy unit like a flame, generally their direction is, is similar. So this flame-like intrusion of muddy units into the sandy unit is known as flame structures. And we have a lot of photographs of flame structures and the and the penny contemporary deformation from a number of geological fieldwork area, especially recently I am getting all these flame structures into the into the Gangotri glacier region also by making a pits into the outwash plain deposit. The convolute bedding. Convolute beddings are generally formed in turbid environment and they are characterized by very broad and open synclines, sharp, narrow and tight anticlines. They are also penny contemporaneous deformation in soft sediment. Then there are certain sedimentary structures which are not very common, very popular such as overturned cross bedding, the slump folding, disc structures and the leisure gang events. Leisure gang events we have already discussed during lithification and the diagenesis. So these are our sedimentary structures which are formed at the bottom of the bed. They are also known as sole structure. Then the secondary structures are the chemical structures. The most common is concrete. Concretes, they are basically are, are concretions. Concrete are concretions. They are basically very common in limestone. They are irregular shape structures. And generally they are formed around certain nucleus. Uh, they may be of hematite, they may be of siderite composition also. Then the beside this concretion, the stylolites are also secondary structures. Stylolites. Stylolites are like this. They are also very common in limestone. They divide the limestone into the two blocks. They are suture shaped. They are interpretation structures. The tooth of one side that fits into the socket of another side. They are formed by pressure solution. The stylolites. So these are the stylolites and the concretions. These are the sedimentary structures which are secondary in nature. They are also chemical in nature. Then the sedimentary structures which are organic or which are biogenic in nature. So the biogenic sedimentary structure. Biogenic sedimentary structures. They are of two types. They are known as Ichnofossils, they are also known as Levenesporin, they are also known as trace fossils. Biogenic structures are of three, three types. Number one, bioturbation structures, then bio 
lamination or bio stratification then bio erosional and then which are formed by the excreta they are excrement excrement structure the bio lamination they are also known as bio stratification generally the biogenic structures they are known as trace fossils they are also known as ichno fossils bioturbation means they are disturbed by the the sediments are disturbed by the organic activity bio stratification means there is some laminations again bio erosion they are formed by the erosional action and excrement means they are the excreta of the organism caprolites and the fecal plates the bio termination that includes the borings burrows tracks trails means they are formed by the organic activity then the bio stratification they are very common organic sediment structures and they are very very famous known as spermatolites they are formed by blue green algae they are formed by cyanobacteria and the stromatolites are those organic sediment structures which are dome shaped which are columnar and they look like if you cut the cabbage by knife the their internal, internal structure is similar to to that then the bioerosional that is the boring and the excrement that is the fecal pellets so these are the organic sediment structures and the most common trace fossil is scolithus scolithus is basically that is also known as pipe rock that is columnar rock then the thalassinitis is also ichno fossil thalassinitis means the three dimensional irregular shaped trace fossils these are very common trace fossils common and the most common stromatolite is the they are very common in limestone the conophyton conophyton is similar to a cone and that's why it is known as conophyton the stromatolites they dates back to 3.5 uh, billion years so the organic sedimentary structures stromatolites are not fossils but they are organo sedimentary structure so we have discussed three type of sedimentary structures the physical sedimentary structures which are inorganic the chemical sedimentary structures are the secondary sedimentary structures they are also inorganic and the organic sedimentary structures so there are, are biogenic sedimentary structures so there are three type of sedimentary structure physical chemical and the biological but the most common and the most popular is the physical sedimentary structure are the physical are the a uh, mechanical sedimentary structure are inorganic sedimentary structures and we have discussed in detail all those physical and mechanical sedimentary structure which are formed either at the top surface of the bed or which are formed at the bottom of the bed or which are formed within the bed and all these sedimentary structures they provide the top and bottom of the bed they provide the direction of the deposition environment they provide the physical chemical and biological condition under which the rock was deposited thank you and good luck in next lecture we will because we have discussed the basic concepts of sedimentology the origin of sedimentary rock the diagenesis the lithification then the laminar flow turbulent flow froud number renard number the sedimentary texture and the sedimentary structures the granulometric analysis so now we will start with the new topic and as per the demand of student i hope that now we will start with the sedimentary basins or sedimentary environment thank you and good luck to